Last week, we said an emotional goodbye. Tonight was the first time that I didn't taste the love. To one of the biggest home cooks in the MasterChef kitchen. Willie, please put your apron on your bench. Say goodnight. Tonight, Whoa. the home cooks take over an A-list restaurant. We are about to get our asses handed to us. Let's go. Yes, chef. And I am terrified. And it isn't long. I hope you're joking. Before the heat of the kitchen. I need you to this look at me. You need to chill out. Quit doing everything. Ignites an explosive meltdown. I know how to run a restaurant. All you're doing is yelling at me, trying to make you me won't listen to you, 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 Shut up. You too. The final six home cooks are walking the Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California, where tonight their culinary skills will be put to the test at the legendary rock and roll Sunset Marquee Hotel. Going into the Sunset Marquee, and I just feel like royalty. I mean, rock and roll royalty. You can see all the pictures on the wall of all the rock stars that have been there. Dylan, Springsteen, U2. And we go by this pool, and of course, there's the California hottie sitting out in the water. Wow, this big old country boy don't see stuff like that in Texas. I can't believe that I made it to the top six. I would love to open my own bar or bakery one day, and I'm here to show myself that I can do whatever I put my mind to. Welcome, everybody, to the Cavatina Restaurant at the Sunset Marquee Hotel. This hotel is steeped in history. Since the birth of rock and roll, if a killer band or artist comes to Hollywood, they stay here. So, do you have any idea why we brought you here? This is the MasterChef Restaurant Takeover. In this challenge, you talented six home cooks will be taking the reins here at one of the finest restaurants in the country. Wow, I knew it was coming eventually, but oh, here at this place, this is like elite of the elite. Now, Graham and I have restaurants. We know what it takes to run a restaurant. In fact, Joe isn't here tonight because he is taking care of critical restaurant business of his own as we speak. OK, it's time to pick the teams. Jamie and Leslie, since you both were on the winning team in that amazing tag team dim sum challenge, you will both be team captains tonight. Both of you, please, come and stand over by me. Thank you. The last time I was a team captain, it was a nightmare. So going into this, I want to make sure I'm a winner tonight. So there's going to be nothing stopping me. Jamie, because you have been on the winning side of more team challenges, you get to pick first. I do not want to be a team leader in this situation. So I need somebody strong who will not be scared at all in this situation. This person I know is going to thrive in right. this environment. Mm -hmm. Christian, I need well, you. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie, she's very soft-spoken, but she's going to have to have a voice. She's going to have to speak up. If she don't, we're doomed. Uh, Leslie. I think this person has shown pizzazz, has outdone pretty much everybody in this whole competition. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, congratulations. Exactly. Jamie, you're picking for both teams. This person has incredible finesse. Courtney. Courtney, come pick up. Interesting. Welcome to the blue team. Uh, Cutter, uh, last pick again. Please, come pick it open. Overall, I think I have a great team. My only worry is that Cutter's not going to shut up because he can be very in your face, and that part I don't appreciate. Tonight, you guys will be serving over 50 guests. Now, we'll be talking to all the guests here in the dining room tonight. We'll listen to what they've got to say, but ultimately, Graham and I will be deciding the winning team. And you know what happens to the losers. They'll face the dreaded pressure test. All of you, let's go. Michael, how are you, sir? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Good you to are? have you here. Excellent. Come on in. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to a very special guest, Chef Michael Schlau, who is the chef and owner of Cavatina Restaurant here. And he is here to demo the dishes that you will be replicating for his A-list diners. For service today, the six home cooks will make two appetizers, 
Prince Edward Island mussels, and a Parisian gnocchi. Then, two entrees, a Mediterranean sea bass, and a New York strip steak. So, the first dish that we're gonna do today is gonna be the mussel dish. Start off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some cherry tomatoes, and then about 12 mussels. Once you put the mussels in, cover the pan, okay, so the mussels open up. Then we have warm grilled bread. That's the first dish. Nice. Any normal chef would have weeks to practice and learn these dishes. We get two minutes. This is gonna be hard. So to make the gnocchi, we're gonna be putting a combination of butter, flour, some eggs in pastry bags. Take an offset spatula, make gnocchi. Here's how you know they're done. They'll start to float, and I want you to dip them into an ice bath, okay? How long do they need to be in the ice water? I would say two minutes. And this is gonna to help to color the gnocchi, okay? Take a little bit of this pecorino sheep's cheese. They look incredible. First entree, we're gonna do a bass dish. We're gonna cook the skin side of the fish first. Once you see that the skin is starting to crisp on the outside, flip the fish. So, for plating this, quinoa, two pieces per portion, beautiful salad. Okay, for our last dish, we're going to do a beautiful New York strip steak. I've already grilled it lightly. Take a little bit of butter, sear that steak off again. We're gonna serve that with asparagus and confit rats potatoes. Incredible. Finish off with the mustard seed chimichurra. Wow, nice, amazing. I know that we are about to get our asses handed to us, and I am terrified. You have one hour to prep and two hours to serve everybody out in that dining room. There's one more thing. To help you get through it, there'll be somebody expediting tonight. The chef who was just here? No, me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be expediting. The heat is gonna get real hot in this kitchen. I'll be making sure that every dish is up to the usual requirements of this restaurant. Your 60 minutes prep time starts now. Both teams must now hastily devise a game plan for tonight's service. I'm gonna take care of the muscles. Maybe you can help me with the mushrooms. I'm searing the steaks. Listen, you can, you can make all the faces you want. I'm making the steaks. She's gonna be the, the final plater, because she has the better idea. No, listen, do me a favor. Are you the captain or am I the captain? So please, stop I'm now. I'm trying to make this work now. smoothly, though. I listen understand. No, I'm not gonna listen to you, because you're not the captain. That's what this is for, okay? okay? See that patch there? It's on my arm. Doesn't say Team Cutter. I'm in charge. I have the final word. Let's just get the job done. Yogi, yeah, I want you to do it. Are you comfortable with cooking muscles? Sure. And I can do all the touches. I'm going to try my best to suck it up and do it, but I'm scared. All right, let's do it. So this is their first time in a kitchen like this. I mean, this is Jamie's chance to, to reassert herself as that leader in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Leslie gets flustered under pressure and he starts panicking. Yep. Elizabeth is going to have to come in and calm him down because if he starts losing it, everybody's gonna. As both teams race to get their dishes ready for service, blue team captain Jamie is struggling to find her voice as a leader. Come on, hello, Mr. Barracks. Come on, Jamie. Come on. Jamie, you gotta move, move. This is brutal. Jamie, yes. come around here a minute. I'm on, scared. Oh, sorry. Ow. Don't be intimidated. Okay. We can do this. Okay, but get used to the voice. Okay. okay. As Jamie tries to find her confidence as captain, red team leader Leslie is watching every move his team makes. You're burning that. You're burning that. I got the mushrooms. I got this. Leslie, you can't be putting me off of something, okay? I got it. I got it. I think Leslie is so egotistical. No, no, get out of the way, Cutter. You're just all in the way. Move, move, move. He's an ex beautician house bitch that works for his wife. So I think he's trying to like prove his manhood or something. Give me those potatoes. I got it. I got it, Cutter. You can't have everything, okay? Right now, I got it. I am not going to let what happened the last time happen this time. I need you for a minute. Come with me. I am not losing control of my authority here. I don't want to hear any excuses. Just listen and do what I'm asking you to do. Look, I need you to look at me to make sure. I can sure. hear you. No. I need to look at you. No, I need you to listen look to me. at me. Talk to me. Don't I need me. You, talk to me. I need you to look at me. Then I know you're listening. <laughs> I'm not your kid, okay? First of all, you need to chill out and be a team leader and quit doing everything. Okay. We're a team, okay? okay? okay. I, 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 We're a I, I, team. Okay, okay. I, I, no, I, 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 tell me. Okay, okay. Come in here. Come in. Oh, that Come in. This is embarrassing.
the VIP guests are quickly filling the dining room of Cavatina Restaurant, located in the world-famous Sunset Marquee Hotel. Back in the kitchen, a dispute between Red Team Captain Leslie and teammate Cutter is spiraling out of control. Come here, come here, come here, both of you. Come here. This guy has just given me his right. I, I hear you, Chef. So I want you to focus on the job in hand. Yes, and chef. that is a fully booked dining room and a fully booked dining room. Yes, so chef. you put your yes. aside for a minute and come hey, back yes, to this competition. Yes, chef. Now, shake hands, and we're going to go through this as a team. Yes. Let's go. Let's do it. Every team Leslie's been on, he's had an issue with somebody. He's a loser, and he's a sad excuse of a man. So I just got to play his game and just get through it. Here we go. First orders, good luck, guys. Are we together as a team? Yes, 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 yes. Red team on order, two covers table, two. One knock you on muscles. Blue team, two covers table, two. One knock you on muscles. Hurt? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Got it? Let's go. Well, the tickets start flying in, and Chef Ramsay starts screaming out all these numbers. Four covers table, 14. Two knock you, two muscles. Followed by three knock you on muscles. I've never done this before. This is all new to me. I just got to keep saying, yes, Chef, yes, Chef. Don't stop working. Yes, yes chef. chef. Thank you. Come on, guys. Give me salt and pepper. I'm assigned to do gnocchi. I won my apron on gnocchi, so I'm going to do this perfectly. Let's go, guys. Red team, first table for how long? Got three gnocchi, one muscle. Lovely, Leslie. While the red team adapts to the fast pace of the kitchen and begins to send out orders, the blue team is struggling to get their appetizers out of the kitchen. Ah, uh, blue team, look at me. I hope you're joking. Who done that? I did that. It looks like glue. I'm making you new one. Glue? Yeah, it looks yeah, like... Yeah, you're being polite. It looks like... Yeah. Enough's enough now. I'm sorry, chef. Courtney, Hazel, delegate. This challenge is so intense and hard. And I'd rather just be here and cook than continuing being team captain and sink our ship. Blue team, what is happening? I'm taking over as team captain. You're the captain. Let's go. As Courtney, the newly appointed captain, attempts to get the blue team headed in the right direction, the red team is working in complete harmony, blazing through the appetizer service. You like that, Leslie? Yeah, that's good. Just good. flip it, flip it, flip it. Cutter and I did a full turnaround, and we're really working well together. Two knocky. OK, yes, chef. Service, please. Thank you. With just a few orders remaining, Leslie has his red team focused on completing all their appetizers. Meanwhile, the blue team is still struggling to complete their first appetizer order. These gnocchi are the hardest thing I've ever had to make in my life. It's made with pate choux, which is usually used in pastries. And it's such a delicate batter that it falls apart. I am scared to give this to him. Give it to me. If I give that to you, you're going to throw it out. Can you, can you tell me what to do so they don't turn into mush? First table. You want me to be captain? Do you, you want me to take that badge? Yeah, Here, sure. Be captain because... This is ridiculous. I'm completely inadequate to be a team leader. I don't have the experience in a hot kitchen at a fast pace, and I need to pass the baton over immediately. Welcome to my world, you ladies. Let's go. The fact that Red Team is being us right now, like, come on, you got Emma Leslie, Cutter. So I'm going to make sure that this gnocchi is cooked properly so we can get these orders out. Come on, I need two orders of mushrooms, Jamie. I got another order of gnocchi coming out. Once I took the role of captain, everything started to flow quite good. Your gnocchi are right here. Finally. Thank you, Christian. Let's yes, go. Chef. Blue Team, keep it going, yes? Yes, Chef. While new Captain Christian has the blue team on track and sending out orders, the red team is putting the finishing touches on their final order of appetizers. Great job. You guys are doing a terrific job. Out in the dining room, the red team's customers are giving Graham feedback on their appetizers. I wanted to know what you thought of the gnocchi. I think it's very flavorful. Good, good. I had the red team's mussels. The sauce was actually really spicy. It had a great bite. I loved it. In the kitchen, the blue team is finally plating their last order of appetizers. Let's go. Go service, please. Good job. It was hell, but good job. Let's just focus on these entrees, and we can, we can redeem ourselves, OK? As the blue team catches their breath before the start of the entree service, 
The customers in the dining room are critiquing their appetizers. I had the blue team mussels. The broth is awesome. It's like got the right amount of spice in it. I had the blue team Snoki. The flavors were actually quite enjoyable. Despite their long wait, the blue team's customers are impressed with their dishes. Back in the kitchen, both teams are working furiously as entree service begins. Wake up, we're live, let's go. We can do this, guys, we can do this. Now we have an opportunity to show the chefs, we got this. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Blue team, great first table, much better. While Christian has the blue team off to a great start with the entrees. The pace of the kitchen has reignited the tension between Red Team Captain Leslie and Cutter. Leslie, do you want some help? No, I don't need help with the steak. Take care of the bass. Let's get more steaks on. We can cook more than one order at a time. Cutter, do me a favor. Shut up. I've been in a restaurant. All you're doing is yelling at me, trying to make you a call. You won't listen to me. Shut up. Hey, you too. Come here. I have never seen Chef Ramsay so seethingly angry. We're totally screwed. With entree service in Hollywood's Cavatina restaurant in full swing, Blue Team Captain Christian has his team on the same page and quickly completing orders. Hello, I'm gonna see you guys. Get that CBI down, Courtney. Let's go! Meanwhile, the red team is in a state of chaos as Leslie and Cutter are once again at each other's throats. You wanna know what, Cutter? Do me a favor. Shut up. I'm gonna go to restaurant. You I don't too. Come here. Come here. Let me show you something now. Come here. Come here, you. Out there is a fully booked restaurant, and I don't want them to hear you fighting and arguing. Do you understand? Now, look at me. I'll send you both home, and I'll get behind there, I swear to God, and I'll cook every dish on my own with Elizabeth if you two don't get it together. I don't want it. One more argument from anybody. Let's Differences go. aside and focus on them. Yes, Let's chef. Go. Got it? Let's yes, go. Yes, chef. Right now, I need to just speak to Cutter in a nice way. And if Cutter doesn't behave himself and do what he's told, then I don't need him in the kitchen. He can go and sit in a corner like a baby. Leslie, this next steak, be careful, it's rare, OK? Yes, chef! Cutter, yes, chef. see best skin, nice and crispy, please, yes, yes? We're now pros in a professional kitchen. Yes, yes chef. chef! Let's go. As the red team tries to put their personality differences aside, new Captain Christian has the blue team thriving as a unit. I want these plays going out looking good. Look how beautiful Thank you. Is. Entrees are going very well. We get in a rhythm of putting everything in the window at the same time. Well, good job, blue team. Let's go. Push good it job, blue team. Let's go. Jamie, yes. they look beautiful. Let's go. Thank Service, you. please. Blue team, the last table is two steak, both medium well. Keep it going, blue team. Yes, chef. As the blue team races to complete their final order of service, the red team's roller coaster of conflict has come to a halt, and they're swiftly completing entree orders. Now we're rolling. Now we're rocking and rolling. Cutter and Leslie have made up, and we finally, as one team, are putting out great plates, and I think we're doing a great job. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's what I call finesse. Yes, chef. Then the last table is one bass, one steak, medium well. Yes, yes. chef. Thanks coming out right now, chef. Last table, blue team. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Come on, let's get in the window. Come on. Thank you. Christian did do a very good job. We did end strong compared to how we began, but I feel like I got hit by a car. Where's that, baby? Leslie, last table. Steak's ready. Medium well, yes? Yes. Good, very nice. Yes. Service, please. Hallelujah, man. Thank God this thing is finally over. This had to be one of the toughest things I have ever done, and I am, like, exhausted. Ay, 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 ay. As service comes to an end in the kitchen, the Red Team's customers in the dining room are giving feedback on their entrees. How have the entrees been? It's really good. It could have been maybe the temperature a little bit warmer. OK. Sea bass is very good, cooked well, especially like the garden vegetables it comes with. A very nice touch. The blue team's sea bass was delicious. It was perfectly cooked, and I thought the presentation was very nice. The blue team steak was poorly seasoned, so it's kind of like meat on a plate. With service completed, the guests in the dining room have given both teams' entrees mixed reviews. OK, guys, come over. First of all, well done. Uh, I haven't had an easy service in my life yet. That's after 25 years. You dug in and you got through it. But this is the competition. Graham and I have decided 
It's too close to call. And do you know what? The verdict will happen back in the MasterChef kitchen. Good job. Good well done. Good, Good job, night. Guys. Good job. Cheers, you guys. Cheers, guys. Looking at the red team and all the arguing and commotion, you know, my team didn't really have any of that. I brought my team together, and I felt that we finished with a bang. We looked a lot better than the blue team. We had our moments with the yelling with me and Cutter, but in the end, we got things done. And if we don't win, I'm going to be upset. One team, one, one team dream. dream. I came here for a purpose. I'm here for my son. I want to show him regardless of what you go through in life, you can always achieve your dream. I definitely want to own my own restaurant in the next couple of years, so I can't go home right now. Welcome down, guys. Come on in, please. After this challenge, I've realized that I'm not cut out to work in a restaurant kitchen, but I still have a dream to become a full-time cookbook writer, and I am not going home. Welcome, everyone. Now, last night, you all made a gigantic leap from humble home cooks to chefs running a dinner service in a truly professional kitchen. Both teams had their ups and downs, and that's just the way that service goes. But it's how you bounce back from those moments that truly count. Jamie, what happened? I was not confident enough to lead the team. So I passed the torch along. Mm -hmm. Leslie, Cutter, I pulled you two out. Yes, twice. You did. We uh, had our differences, but we worked through it. And no matter what was going on, we still put out good dishes, I feel. You've got to cool it down, both of you. Graham and I watched you cook. We tasted everything. After that, we spoke to all the guests. And we ultimately decided the winning team based on the performance in the kitchen and the feedback from the diners. The winning team of the Restaurant Takeover Challenge is... Congratulations. Graham and I watched you cook. We tasted everything. And we ultimately decided the winning team based on the performance in the kitchen and the feedback from the diners. The winning team of the Restaurant Takeover Challenge is... Congratulations. The red team. Well done. Did I just hear this right? What did he say? Leslie, finally, you've broken that duck. I want to cry. Hallelujah, man. I finally won something exactly when I needed it. Congratulations, red team. As you know, Cutter, it's not as you start, it's how you finish. And when you listened, those entrees flew out brilliantly. You're all safe, and you're all guaranteed now to be in the top five of the biggest culinary competition in the world. Let that sink in as you head up to the gallery. Off you go. Thank you, Thank chef. You, well done. Good job. Blue team, please put these on. I definitely failed as a team captain. So I gotta do what I gotta do. Unfortunately tonight, all three of you will be cooking in this upcoming pressure test. And when it's over, at least one of you will be going home. It's time to find out what you'll have to cook tonight in this dreaded pressure test. Trust me, it's a tall order. This dish takes one of these, a simple cream puff, and turns it into... this stunning croque en bouche. This is a classic French dessert, beautiful to look at and even more incredible to eat. A spectacular tower of delightful cream puffs assembled into an incredible cone bound with threads of caramel. Look at this light pastry. A beautiful cream filling inside like a little treasure. Mm. Don't know what it is, never had it before. Croaking what? Forget the fancy name, let's just call it what it is. A big old yummy cream puff tower. There are so many steps that can go wrong with this. To get that pastry absolutely perfect, that is not easy. And then there's a the filling. The consistency has to be perfect. Not too sweet, not too thick. And make sure the whole thing doesn't fall over. 
Jamie, can you do this? Hell yeah. Courtney, can you do this? Yeah, chef. Christian, can you do this? Yeah, I guess. It's time for all three of you to head to your stations. It's sophisticated and elegant. There's no way that Christian can do well in this challenge. On your stations, you all have the exact same ingredients to make a magnificent cream puff tower. You have just 90 minutes to make us a stunning croquembouche. Is everybody ready? Yes. 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 Yeah. Your 90 minutes starts now. Go, Christian. I just ate a couple of croquembouches before, and so I don't think I'm going home today. Although I've never made a croquembouche, I'm feeling very confident. Uh, I'm not really too much of a dessert fan, but hey, right now, this is a moment that I need to fight through this. Tough one. It's a hardcore. For me, the secret behind a great puff is a roll is to make sure you cook out that flour. If you don't cook out that flour, A, they don't rise properly, B, the eggs yep. don't emerge inside that mixture. Once you put the pate in the oven mm -hmm. and you pipe out those profiteroles, rolls, you start working on the pastry cream. Mm -hmm. And the creaminess and the texture of that is paramount because you want no lumps. Right. The technique is so involved. Yeah. Okay, guys, hour and five minutes remaining. By now, your profiteroles should be in the oven. Right, how are you feeling? I'm feeling confident. Can you bounce back? I can definitely bounce back. How many coffee bushes have you made? Uh, probably like five. If you're not going home, who is? I think Christian's pretty vulnerable. You got this, baby. Just under 45 minutes to go. Start working on your pastry cream. All right, Christian. Yes, chef. You got your profiteroles out. Now that they're made, it's all about getting them filled. Yes, chef. Now, what does the future hold for Christian if he goes home today? My focus is not going home. We know how much your, your five-year-old son means to you, how important that is to set that example and to lead, and how Definitely. proud he's got to be to see you yeah. get to as far as you can get. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I came too far through life. I went through a lot of stuff, and, you know, I don't want to be that person walking out. I think you can make this happen. Yes, chef. Yes, all chef. right, good luck. All right, Courtney, how's it shaping up? They're, they're quite small, but it's going to come together. you got some awkward different shapes today. Purposely done, or...? I was going for consistency, realized that they were a little too small, so I started making them bigger. If you're not going home, who is? I don't know. Are you thinking it's you? It quite possibly could be me, Chef. Wow, Courtney, you're feeling the pressure tonight, aren't you? Yes. How's that for honesty? 20 minutes to go. Get your sugar weighed out for that incredibly difficult caramel. Right now, they've got to start multitasking, filling up the, the rolls and starting that caramel mm -hmm. at the same time. With the caramel, you're not touching it. You just let it sit there and do its thing. The minute you start shaking caramel, yeah. stirring it, you're going to crystallize it. The minute it starts crystallizing, it goes grainy. Yeah, almost like a broken sauce. Mm -hmm. You don't have the glue to build it. You start speeding up that process, the caramel goes to mm -hmm. bitter, right. and overcooked, burn. and burned caramel. Jamie has started building. We're starting to put hers together as well now. So Christian is clearly behind at this stage. Way behind. Indeed. Oh! Christian. Yes, Chef. You OK? I'm waiting for the sugar to brown. Why are you waiting for the sugar? It's not the right color. If I don't get the right texture or the right color, I'm all the way screwed. He's clearly out of his element. You've got 10 minutes. With time running out in tonight's pressure test, Christian, Jamie, and Courtney are battling it out to build a beautiful Crockenbush Tower. Put it together with precision. Get the caramel on. Come on, caramel. So Christian is clearly behind at this stage. Way behind. Time is running out, and I got to get this caramel going. Christian, how long until you start assembling? Give me an idea. I'm going to just start doing now, chef. Good. I'm literally sweating in my pants right now. This is where it really takes the finesse, making sure it's gorgeous. Courtney's is looking nice coming up now. She's going into the center a lot earlier than I expected. You will fit. Yes, that's right. Eight minutes remaining. Every profiter roll needs to fit perfectly. This chicken is hot. Speed up, Christian. Speed up. 
Christians is starting to clap because he used sugar syrup that hadn't gone to caramel on the first three layers. Right. Now it's starting to get Now it's starting right. to clap. Let's go. Oh, he's using tongs in a group. 30 seconds to go. Courtney's hitting us with the sponge right now. Wow. 20 seconds to go. It's burnt. It's happening. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop. Hands in the air. Time is up. <sighs> wow. Oh, my God. It's time now to taste your cock and bush and find out who will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen tonight and who moves forward to the top five of the biggest culinary competition anywhere in the world. Courtney. Courtney can sometimes just nail it in crucial moments, and I have a lot of respect for that. Visually, it looks beautiful. It's the only one with the spun sugar. The spun sugar just should tear away. That's the idea. Roll that round. When we serve these in the restaurants for celebration, the sponge sugar sits on top, and then bang, you have there a beautiful croque-en-bouche. Caramel's lightly dipped. And then for the crunch, crisp, light, beautiful. Mmm. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Finishing, gorgeous. Pastry cream, light. Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Look at that. Nice. Have you ever made one of these before? No, but my mom always told me she would love to make me one, so I just thought of her when I was making it. With that spun sugar, it's not just a garnish to make it look pretty. Like it add something and like that one that I just tried you could hear it crunching it, it adds a completely different dimension but the greatest thing in there is that that pastry cream this is what we asked for this is top notch good job thank you chef christian hey finney not too good i didn't get my sugar on in time but um hopefully the taste will get me through visually different Colored caramel. On the bottom, I've got a unfinished caramel, almost like a sort of blonde sugar syrup. Some different shapes moving there. You've got a slight indent here on the inside. So now it looks like it's been slammed against the wall. I was racing with time, so my focus it. was definitely start building. Let's sample. The secret is a gentle tap to break the caramel. Nice sounding caramel, and it should just ease off. Now, oh, got hardly any cream in there. Mmm. However, what you have nailed is the cooking of the profiteroles. They're light, they're crisp on the outside, uh, really tasty. Thank you, Shaq. Thank you. All right, so go ahead and try one. See, that's. I got like three pieces on this one just because of how much caramel now mm -hmm. is on that, so. The profiteroles are great. The sugar is what's getting me. Yeah. The fact that they're just like glued together. Yeah. Jamie. Chef. Wow. Jamie's looks real good. It has the shape that it is supposed to be. It looked pretty much exactly as the one the chef presented, so I don't think she's going home today. Um, no finishing touches around the outside, no sponge sugar? No sugar got towards the bottom and it was easing out. Um, what worried me, the amount of sugar. Yeah. None of this sugar should be seen. It should be right. almost like a glue that sticks them together from the outside, because the problem I'm gonna have now is when I pick one off there like that, the whole lot is gonna come up in my hand. The no. delicate way that you put this together here was brilliant. But then here, I've got this mask of heavy, sticky caramel. I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to take one off for me. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. 
not going to be able no. to. If you're not going to be able to do it, then how the hell am I? Jamie, I want you to take one off for me. Yeah. I'm not going to be able no. to. If you're not going to be able to do it, then how the hell am I? Wow, that's the best I could do in okay. this ruin. But just look at the wedge of caramel there. And every time I lift one off, look, I'm just getting bits of that. Mm. You just touch the top of there. Um. It's wet because of their undercookedness. It may look good, but it tastes nowhere near as good as it looks. I'm sorry, Jamie. So now, you know, with all that sugar, it just starts looking clumsy at the top. Pastry cream's kind of bland. <laughs> they feel a little doughy, but I think it's got some positives. I mean, structurally, it's the most even of everybody's. The filling and the actual flavor is not as explosive as I was expecting. We I mean, don't make it easy. Hard, hard, hard. That was a incredibly difficult pressure test. Sadly, one of you is going home. And we need a moment to discuss that now. That has to be the most difficult pressure test ever. Ever, for sure. Courtney, delicious, light, cooked perfectly. Yeah. I mean, Jamie's mm -hmm. visually tonight looked incredible. Absolutely. I thought for sure that was going to be the star. Christian's has to be one of the better tasting. Mm -hmm. Visually, it doesn't have that bad effect. Right. Not at all. Nowhere near as pretty as the others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's so. Yeah. yeah. Tonight, there was one crock and bush that stood out for all the right reasons in terms of its finesse, its practicality, but more importantly, the taste. Congratulations. Courtney, great job. Well done. Head up to the balcony. Thank you. Jamie critique was not that good. You know, mine wasn't the best, so we shall see. Christian and Jamie, that was a tall order tonight. However, we can only judge you both on what you put forward. Christian's looked awful, so I have a little bit of hope. The person leaving MasterChef, and we are so sorry to see this individual go. I have to redeem myself. I, I don't want to be that person going home. I don't want to let my family down. I don't want to let my son down. I need to win right now. The person leaving MasterChef tonight is Jamie Vitolo. Yep. Christian, say goodbye to Jamie. Congratulations. You're in the top five. Head up to the balcony. Oh, Jamie. We went into this pressure test tonight, young lady, let me tell you, thinking you were the one that was safe. Your bakery assistant's experience didn't shine through. And unfortunately, my darling, you produced a crock and bush that may have looked beautiful, but was totally impractical to break down. I'm sorry, my darling. Come and say goodbye, my darling, please. So Come on. <laughs> Come on, oh. gorgeous little thing. Come here. Uh, you're in New York. I'm in New York. Uh, you need a door opening in our restaurants. Uh, we're there, I guaranteed. I have another job going home, so... <laughs> oh, darling, we can help that. Thank you. OK? Thank Why you. Why my darling? Uh, Thanks. Put your apron on your bench. Oh. Take care. As a kid, I didn't have any friends, I got bullied. But now, I've become stronger. Jamie. 
<laughs> Bloody delicious. Thank you. And you are now the most famous blueberry tart in New Jersey. Congratulations. Thank you. The chefs definitely helped me boost my confidence. I learned a lot about not just cooking, but about myself. This is probably the funniest moment of my life ever. <laughs> the red team, ladies and gentlemen! Nothing is just getting in my way now. I mean, I made it to the top six. Like, that's a huge hurdle I've just jumped. So I've overcome a lot of things that I didn't think I'd ever be able to do. Next week, I'm sure you've missed your loved ones. Yeah. It's a two-hour Master Chef packed with emotion. I'll be honest with you, he's my hero in life. You will make their favorite dish. Love you, Paula. Make something yummy. And then, the home cooks take on a gruesome challenge. Uh, oh, I did. Who's got the brains? I've never made brains a day in my life. Who has the heart? Nice. And who gets the testicles? Are you excited? Yes, yeah. chef. Yes, chef. No, chef. One potato, two potato.